Yeah, sure. But you mentioned uh, uh, briefly uh, as we as we started this interview today um, a little bit regarding you know how, how people are arrested uh, up in the Nordic countries. Is there something you'd like to talk more about? Yeah. Well, uh, basically, what they do, they always had a very uh, close relation with the programs for mind control here in Norway, made in America. Hmm. So heads of psychiatric departments, of hospitals, especially uh, even in the, up until the beginning of the 70s, they were, for example, experimenting in Norway until the middle, actually, LSD, uh, lobotomy, and all these kind of things. Mm. But now they obviously work within what is known as the PSYOPs, the Programs for Mind Control, and uh, uh, also against sectarian activity. They mm. want to define as sectarian activity. If mm. it's... But the problem is, what they define as a time and activity is strange enough uh, all the sects that maybe will not agree with them, then they make them sectarian. Or actually they are sects they have infiltrated and manipulated all the time, mm. and they use uh, and abuse uh, at their own advantage. Mm. Because they can easily, 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 I tell you, manipulate these black magicians out there in Scandinavia. They are a bunch of really ridiculous people mm. in the eyes of God. Mm. I mean... For example, me, I was always trained into the occult world to manipulate people. That mm. was uh, because me, I come from uh, a background that is used to give orders, uh, manipulate people with all the systems of control, knighthoods, uh, Masonic systems, uh, mm. orders, degrees. <laughs> and uh, when I went inside these lodges just to view what was happening in Scandinavia, and mm. then I find myself... Uh, in front of the Book of the Dead and the Seal of Revealing of Alistair Crowley, the Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, Per Christian Kroc, well, dressed up in black with a thing, you know, I mean, it's like, it, and, and, and it's, it's all over the place in Scandinavia, these kind of things. Hmm. You have also the Old Fellow, mm -hmm. and you have uh, the Mary's Lodge for the women in Norway and in Sweden and Denmark, and, mm. and it's all connected to a pyramid that right up not only tolerates Satanism, but works for the spreading of Satanism and to control people by the stick. Mm. They are now listening to us, they are now evaluating us, and they see when I'm weak, they intervene. Mm. But now they understand also that I have created around me a real big uh, defensive strategy. Mm. And for them, the fact is that uh, not only I'm in a direct relation with the government, with the certain governments and things, for them it's uh, uh, a bit obviously uh, risky to intervene on me. Mm, because yeah, then sure. there is uh, governments like the Turkish governments and many other governments around the world that will start demanding a few questions about what's happening. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, we had already a big shock with the Danish scandal regarding Mohammed's uh, peace and blessing be upon him, uh, yeah, the his comic strip. Yeah, Dr. sure. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, that is the result of a satanic propaganda. That is the result of the fact that you are the most loyal citizens of the Vatican in Scandinavia. Hmm. You wear the Black Cross, the White Cross, the Red Cross. You are slaves of the Vatican. That hmm. is how it is. Hmm. And all... It go, you know, because these pyramids of power, these Masonic pyramids of power are built, and right up there is the control of the Vatican. Here in Norway, for example, the Opus Dei comes in with a bishop from Sweden every, every month mm -hmm. to give his instructions. And at the same time, half of the clergy in Oslo is a Freemason. Mm. <laughs> Officially, Freemasonry is banned from the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. But here they practice it, and they endorse it, and they know about it, actually, uh, a lot of Catholics. And I don't know what kind of, uh, why they're not shameful about it. Hmm. I talked with a Catholic friend some time ago about it. Hmm. He said, we all know that they're Freemasons, but what can we do? Hmm. And uh, I went uh, for a period, and I infiltrated this whole show, and I saw how it works, and it operates, because I was always in search of uh, blackmailing material, mm. and I saw that uh, a lot of priests were using um, Romanian prostitutes here in Oslo. <laughs> well, 
male prostitutes. <laughs> Mm, okay. Say. Yeah. So it's a bit too much. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would say that uh, it was also a very big disappointment to see a lot of Protestant priests and all the submitting to the Vatican in secret inside their Masonic lodges <laughs> and becoming priests for the Vatican because you become also Gnostic priests at the top level of this pyramid. Okay. Mm. And in this, uh, and then you learn how to worship Baphomet. Hmm. And at one point, uh, you are uh, really a full-on Satanist. <laughs> and, uh, the, the, imagine, the, for example, the, a guy like no. Nikolai Fritzvold. You go around the internet and you put Nikolai Fritzvold, you see he's a Satanist, okay? Okay. But at the same time, he's a Gnostic bishop of the Vatican. Hmm. And he uh, was meeting with the, the best friend of uh, John Paul II regularly inside this uh, conventicle of Martinism here in Oslo, of the Illuminati here in Oslo. Mm. And they were also, in, in, in also meeting with the representative of the Opus Dei. And all this uh, was happening uh, in uh, a place where they regularly have orgies dedicated to Kali. Hmm. The, the Indian goddess of death. Uh, yeah, and uh, they call themselves Amukos, hmm. the okay. Knights of Shambhala. Hmm. And uh, this uh, uh, Amukos uh, sect is uh, a very specific one, a very particular one, uh, born out of a guy who, that, that, Babaji or something like that. Is the name. Okay. And basically, he went to Alistair Crowley when Alistair Crowley was still alive, hmm. and he said to him... Uh, what more can I do to bring forward the, the cult of the Knights of Shambhala? And he said, go to India to pick up the old tantricas, the sorcery cults. And this guy actually literally uh, stayed for, uh, for a long time in, uh, in India mm -hmm. and came back in the 70s with all the sorcery material and spread it through the lodges of the Knights of Shambhala, the arcane and magical order of the Knights of Shambhala. Mm -hmm. An local group uh, which was founded at that point officially in 1982 by Michael Maggi, which they called himself Babaji or whatever, mm. and uh, then called himself Lokanata Maraji, and uh, by permission of his uh, holiness, Shiri Gurdjieff uh, Maragazaranant, whatever, who mm. was uh, this tantric guru, uh, he opened his Uttara Kaula tantric order of northern India also here in uh, Norway. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's actually very successful in Norway and uh, is uh, led always by this Nikolai Fritzford, but also by other people who are themselves involved uh, with uh, Michael Aquino. Do, do you think that this, um, this process happens so gradually that these people at the end don't know what they're doing or they, do, do they head into this with full knowledge from, from the start, so to speak? I think that uh, many of them uh, are just manipulated, but the people who are at the top in charge of the systems, mm -hmm. that's why they give so much importance to all these charters, these pieces of paper, these initiations, mm -hmm. is because they have to be sure of the loyalty on top. Yeah, yeah, sure. Always to the same Satan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It has to be, you know, very much. And the Knights of Shambhala derived from a cult that was established within the SS originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, the SS uh, were totally involved in, uh, in this kind of black magic uh, and sent their uh, elite uh, troops uh, to uh, Tibet uh, to search for the uh, shamans of Bonpa. And then uh, they picked up these practices and they brought them to the castle of Bessenburg. Okay. Where, hmm. You know Bessenburg, the castle of Bessenburg, a bit uh, of the uh, history. Um, do, do, you, do you mean Wevelsburg? Yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Me, I'm very bad with the languages, guys. You have to understand them. I'm yeah, no, no problem. No problem. No, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, this is. I'm not a Nordic. I don't have a Nordic <laughs> approach with the language. Exactly. So yeah. here with the languages, you make me feel a bit shameful. Of no, my... no, no, no problem. The, these but, uh, things happen. But let's say that yes, in that castle, in uh, how you say, how you spell uh, it? Uh, Wevelsburg is W at the beginning. I know. No, but, but spell it a bit in a more in a German way. Because I know that you Swiss can do it in a term like uh, Ve Wevelsburg. Ve Wevelsburg. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no, because we have to enter so, that kind something, of mentality. Something well, like that, yeah. <laughs> and this, uh, this uh, well, don't be neutral. I know that the Swiss are stayed neutral even across the war, you know. I mean, <laughs> you, you manage even to get paid the train fare uh, from the troops going to Norway. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. But 